Good evening. Shabbat Shalom. It's wonderful to see everyone here. My name is Patrick Aleph. I'm a rabbinical student and founder of OneShul.org. That is OneShul, O-N-E-S-H-U-L.org. If you're watching us on Ustream or on Facebook, I highly recommend that you go to our website, OneShul.org, O-N-E-S-H-U-L.org, and watch us there. That's where our chat room is. You're going to be able to participate and have a lot more fun than if you're watching us through other forms of media. So please go to O-N-E-S-H-U-L dot O-R-G uh, in order to participate. If you are just now uh, getting into the chat room, I highly recommend you log in. So if you look at the bottom of the chat room, you can log in with Facebook, Twitter, or you can create an anonymous uh, name. The great thing about being able to participate uh, using the chat room is that you can ask questions, you can respond. This is a very interactive service. We really want you to participate. The first way you're going to participate is by saying your name and uh, where you're visiting from and also um, something about yourself. Uh, how you found out about One Shoal, or uh, maybe what you're hoping to get out of the evening. So please go on ahead, log in the chat room, and let's start by introducing ourselves. Again, my name is Patrick Olive. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where Punk Torah is. Punk Torah is the uh, parent organization of One Shoal. We are an online Jewish community for people who have fallen through the cracks of Jewish life, and that includes uh, funny-haired rabbinical students like myself. <laughs> I just, uh, I have to say, I'm going to break the third wall here, or fourth wall here, by saying uh, I tried a new hair care product thing, and now my hair is just looks like I stuck my head in an electrical socket. <laughs> so uh, please forgive my poor uh, hair choices. Um, this is an early service. Normally we do services at either 7 or 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we are pushing services earlier this week just to see if people uh, appreciate having an early service. I know as an example, in California, Arizona, it's only 3 o'clock. Uh, for people, however, in Europe, it's midnight. So, you know, it's it's tough for, uh, for us to strike a balance. We try to have as many Shabbat services as uh, we can, but, um, you know, we're doing some experimenting to see what people like. So, what brought me to One Shul? Well, you know, as the founder of Punk Torah, I wanted to pray with my community, and this is my community. Uh, all of us uh, online together is a community. So I like the fact that I can daven with you tonight. Uh, that's very meaningful to me. Uh, a little bit about One Shul, if this is your first time here. We're a lay-led, um, pluralistic community. Now, what does pluralistic mean? That means that we accept everyone. So, at any given time, you might be taking uh, Kabbalah classes from an Orthodox rabbi. Uh, you may be doing Jewish chanting with a member of the Kohenet. Uh, you may be doing Jewish meditation with someone who's a self-described Jubu. Or you may be doing a an afternoon and evening service with someone who identifies with the conservative movement or the reform movement. Um, we're really not about labels. Labels are for shirts. Uh, we're about a community that gets together to celebrate Shabbat, Jewish holidays, and to study together. We have lots of great events going on all the time, so I highly recommend that you sign up for our email list. Um, there are several places on the One Shul website where you can do that so that you can find out about upcoming events. Uh, you can also see the events on our Ustream calendar, um, and then we also have our Google calendar here on the One Shell website. So if you like using Google Apps, uh, you can actually sync up your calendar to our calendar, so you'll always know what's going on, and you'll get little messages on your cell phone about it. So lots of different ways to get involved. So as I said before, let's introduce ourselves in the chat room, and I'll go on ahead and read off who we have here. So I was already speaking to uh, Amir, who was here earlier. So welcome, Amir. This is Amir's first time here. We're all grateful that Amir is here. Um, I just rhymed. Amir is here. Um, Ari, who is a, a wonderful volunteer of ours. Shabbat Shalom, Ari. Ari is from Poland. Um, and Ari's helping us with the YouTube channel. We're really excited to have Ari working on that. Uh, Jonathan is here. Shabbat Shalom, Jonathan. Jonathan and Stephanie from Somerville, Massachusetts. And uh, 
their parrot, Iggy. Uh, Tamara, who's with us uh, quite frequently. Tamara's coming to us from uh, Massachusetts. Uh, we have Jeremiah, Circle Pit Bima, who uh, is another great volunteer. He's a blogger with us. He did last year's DeBartora series that's really great, and it's going to be coming out as a book really soon, so that's going to be terrific. Uh, and Amir is from Toronto. I didn't uh, know where um, Amir was from. Arava, who is uh, with us from um, west of Atlanta, Georgia, in the Douglasville uh, area. Tracy is here with us. Welcome, Tracy. We have all kinds of wonderful people here tonight, and I'm very excited to be celebrating Shabbat with you. One other cool thing that we're going to do tonight. We are not going to use um, a Havaraba, our traditional siddur. So this is the siddur we wrote about, what was it, a year and a half ago, I think, is about when we did this. And we do a, a new siddur every year, and it's written by the community. So you'll have orthodox prayers in here. You'll have renewal, reconstructionist, uh, secular humanist. Uh, you'll have all kinds of, of different uh, brachas, blessings in here. We're going to try out something a little bit different. And I'm going to give you the link here. We are experimenting with a more traditional Siddur. And if you are in the chat room, you can actually download it at that link. Don't click on the link. Copy and paste it in a new window because I don't want you to lose, uh, the, uh, lose the window here. So open that up in a new window. This is not formatted at all. This is just the, the raw... Uh, I don't know what you, the raw text, I guess, of a new Siddur that we're working on. Uh, this was actually designed with the help of the organization BBYO. They have a great website called buildaprayer.org, um, and it's a really cool service. I highly recommend you sign up for it, try it out. Uh, you can write your own um, Shabbat service. So this is a Shabbat service that we worked on. Uh, we've been testing it out at one of One Shul's partner projects, which is One Shul Atlanta, and I'll tell you more about that uh, at the end of services. Um, but this is kind of what we've been playing around with, and I wanted to see uh, what everyone thought about it. So at the end of the evening, give me some feedback. Let me know uh, what you thought about it. So if everyone is comfortable, set, you're in a good seat. Hopefully you have something to drink uh, or something to eat or whatever you're into. Uh, and we will start by doing the lighting of the Shabbat candles. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvata, Vitzivanu Lahadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Please wish everyone in the chat room a Shabbat Shalom, if you haven't already. And we're going to begin on page one of our new service. This is Yadid Nefesh. Yedid nefesh of harachaman misho avdach el retzonecha ya roots of dark kamo ayo yishtachave muhadarecha yevro yedid judecha mino fetsu ve'otam. Hadur na ziva olam na avshi hola tahavatecha ana el na rifa na la beharot la no am zivecha az tit kazek v'tit rafe v'hatalak shivchat olam v'tik yehemu rachamecha v'chus nak al benahu 
Kisei kama nixof nixof ti le rot piti ferret uzach ana eli machmad li bi chushanach me el titalam die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 yada die 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 Turn now to page, let's see, this is actually, unfortunately, out of order because BBYO on their website, um, they design their, um, their Shabbat services to actually be a lot shorter than ours typically are. Uh, so now we're on page uh, three should be. One, two, three. Lechuna rana na la donai na ria litzur yishainu nekad ma fan of betoda biz me wrote na ria lo. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Adonai, our God. For Adonai is our God and our shepherd, and we are God's people and flock. I heard an interesting comment once about this idea of people as a flock, or people as being sheep that are being shepherded by God. And that seems like such a a strange connotation. Does anyone else feel that way, that maybe being called sheep or animals is, is sort of odd? I'd, I'd appreciate your thoughts on this. You know, what do you think about uh, the Torah and, and the Psalms calling us sort of animals? So Arava says that, she, you know, sheep especially, and, and Jeremiah says he's never liked that. What does everyone else think about this, this idea of you know, what, what that's about. And Jeremiah says, even the best shepherd gets cold and hungry. And where does that leave the flock? So that's a very, that's a very good point. Uh, Jonathan says he doesn't mind it in relation to God. Does anyone else have any other thoughts about this idea of us being called animals that are being sort of herded around by God? Uh, Ari says he loves Hebrew animal names like his. <laughs> so Ari means lion. So I was thinking about this and I heard an, an interesting teaching, which is that when... Um, the Torah talks about us being shepherded by God. Um, it doesn't really mean that we are animals that can't make good decisions or that we're, um, you know, stupid or something like that, uh, or that we have animal-like minds, but really what this idea of, of a flock being about is that without a sense of guidance, we don't know what direction we're going in. So you think of any animal on its own could probably survive. You know, um, you know, just about any creature without the support of other creatures could probably survive. But surviving is not living. So you think about when the Torah talks about us as being sheep. It's always in the context of being shepherded in a group. So what does that say about human beings? It says that we need other sheep. We need other people, and we also need guidance. 
But it's not one animal alone that's being guided. It's all of us together being guided by something that we perceive to be greater than us. You know, think about what it must be like for um, an animal that's being herded around to be herded by a human being. You know, the human being is sort of a god to the animals. And in the same way, we think of ourselves as uh, being sort of moved by the Spirit of God in whatever direction we go in. Uh, but we have to do it as a group. And that's what's really special about the Shabbat service, about any prayer service. We have to do it uh, as a group. And that's what makes it truly like what the, the Psalms are speaking of. Uh, we're going to turn now to page 5, Psalm 96. Shiru Ladonai, Shir Hadash, Shiru Ladonai, Kol Haaretz, Shiru Ladonai, Barhu Shemo, Basru Miom Liom Yeshuato, Sapru Vagoyim Kevodo, Vikol Haamim Leaf Leotav, Kikadol Ladonai, Um Hulal Meo. No Rahu Al Kol Elohim Yai Dai Dai Yada Dai Da 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 Dai Yai Da Dai Dai Yai Da 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 Dai Yada Dai Yada Dai Yai Da 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 Dai Yai Da 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 Dai Yai Da Dai Dai Yada Dai Da Da Dai Yai Da 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 Dai Yada Dai Yada Dai Yada Dai Da 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 Dai Yada Da 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 Dai Yai Da Dai Dai Da Da Dai Bottom of page five. Adonai Malak Tagel Haretz Yismehu Irabim Anan Varafel Saviva Zedek Mishpat Micho Kiso Or Zaru Zadik U Yishre Leib Simcha Simchu Zadikim Badonai Vehodu Letzer Kocho So we have a really unfortunate situation that's going on right now in the Jewish community. And uh, I don't want to get into politics. Um, that's not what we do here. Um, but I want to speak about something that is um, very poignant when we think about this week's Torah portion. This week's Torah portion is Toldot, and it means generation. And um, why is it called generation? Because we learn about really the nature of three people. We learn about who Isaac is. So Isaac is the son of Abraham. And I would ask this question. What We're going to do a little bit of pop quiz here. Uh, what is the most tragic thing that happens to Isaac in his life? Does anyone know what Isaac has to deal with very early on in his life? that may have caused him some trouble in his adulthood. And Ari was the first to answer, so he wins the prize, which we don't actually have a prize, but it's the Akedah, it's the sacrifice. So this happens in an earlier Torah portion. Abraham is told by God, sacrifice your son, your only son, the son whom you love. And what happens? He's not sacrificed. God gives a ram in the thicket, and Abraham sacrifices the ram instead. Now, later, 
modern commentators have thought a lot about what this would have been like for Isaac. Because something's interesting in the Torah, Isaac is a very silent character. Um, not much is really talked about. He doesn't really say that much. Um, he's a very sort of bland character. When we first meet him, he's being picked on by his younger brother, or uh, his uh, uh, older brother, rather, and then what happens next? All of a sudden, he's an adult, and he has to have a wife. And he doesn't even find a wife on his own. Abraham sends off uh, Eliezer to find a wife, um, uh, find a wife for him. And uh, then fast forward again, and he's blind. <laughs> he has two sons, and then we get into what happens uh, with them, which is sort of the end of, of this week's Torah portion. Um, and it's a very sort of interesting thing that we really don't know that much. So you think about other Torah portions. Think about the character of Joseph. We know a lot about Joseph. Joseph's talked about a lot. Abraham, we know a lot about Abraham. Jacob, we know a lot about Jacob. Um, we know about him from this week's Torah portion, and we'll know about him from future Torah portions. Um, but Isaac gets kind of lost in the shuffle. Um, he's called by uh, Torah scholars the silent character, um, and possibly the most tragic character. Um, he has to deal with what psychologists would call post-traumatic stress. Um, and so commentators have said that this may be why he was a silent character. Um, Jonathan makes a really great point. Abraham goes down the mountain alone, and they never interact directly again. Um, and so I want to think about that for a moment, and I want to think about you know what that means to uh, to have been Isaac. And, and another thing we know about Isaac, and uh, Arava uh, sort of points at it, is that Isaac dearly loved his mother. Um, he was what we would jokingly today call a mama's boy. As a matter of fact, it says in the Torah that part of what made his marriage with, uh, with Rivka, with Rebecca, work was the fact that Rivka actually consoled him with the death of his mother. So she really helped him with what his big issue was. He, he cleaved to his mother, and why not? He, he had a father that tried to kill him, and they were aloof after that. So of course... Uh, he would um, be as affected as he is. So I want to think about this idea of what happens to us in our past and how it affects us and what we in our time turn into. Isaac turns into a silent character. Let's think then about that and then let's keep that sort of that kavanah, that intention of thinking about the decisions that we are the things that happened to us in the past and how they affect um, in the future. I'd like to do a chant version of, on page four, L'cha Dodi. And it's very similar to what you may have heard when you first came in the chat, uh, came into the room. It was the sort of the opening music, uh, if you were here a little bit earlier. So it's a back and forth chant. We're just going to intone the opening line. Come, O, <clears throat> come, my beloved, with a chorus of praise. Welcome the Sabbath bride, the Queen of Days. And I want to sort of take into account what we think of as the Sabbath bride, you know, could we say that in a sense for tonight's service, Rivka, Rebecca, Isaac's wife, is the Sabbath bride, or perhaps Sarah, Abraham's uh, wife, Isaac's mother, could be the Sabbath bride. But I'd like to, to, to think of the Sabbath bride in the terms of our uh, matriarchs. So the chant's pretty simple. And uh, it's just, 
Lecha dodi li kratka la panesha batne kabela. 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 Lecha dodi li kratka la. Lecha dodi li kratka la. Lecha dodi li krat ka la. Lecha dodi li krat ka la. Panesha bat ne ka be 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 la. Lecha dodi li krat ka la. Panesha bat ne ka be la. Lecha dodi li krat ka la. Panesha bat ne ka be la. Lecha dodi li Krat ka la panesha bat ne ka bela. The line here is shamar v'zachor that we keep and remember Shabbat, and that's where we get a lot of our Shabbat rules. This idea that it's our responsibility to uh, remember and to guard. Now, what's funny is that the song starts Shamor Zahor. Shamor comes from Shamar, means to guard, and Zahor comes from Zahar, which means to remember. But actually, the order in the Torah for which this comes is Zahar first, and then Shamar. So, the idea of guarding Shabbat is actually, if you believe the Torah is written uh, sort of sequentially, then the idea of guarding Shabbat is actually a play on words, the idea of remembering. A lot of people get hung up in liturgy. You know, they want to make sure, there are so many Siddurim that have been written over the years, because people want to make sure that whatever they're saying defends what they believe, right? So we have the idea that no one wants to say he for God, because God isn't a he. And of course, this is not a radical feminist idea. Um, you know, it was uh, Maimonides, you know, in the 1100s, who was talking about this idea that God isn't a he, right? But we want to have our liturgy match up to what we really think. It's sort of like meaning what you say. Um, and therefore, by meaning what we say, we're doing what we say we're going to do. The Torah plays a little bit more eloquently with the words. When it says, in, in truth, Zachar v'shamar, the idea that we remember it and we guard it. I've heard criticisms before from people who have said, well, how can you have an online synagogue? Because you're breaking all of these rules. You know, you're t touching technology. You know, maybe there's people in other countries where Shabbat has technically started, and now you're getting them to be online, and that somehow violates uh, Shabbat. You know, my sense has always been that since the idea of um, since the idea of the zakhar, the remembering, is what comes first, then the guarding actually comes secondary. And I want you to kind of think about that and tell me your thoughts on that. Uh, Guest54 says, Pardon my early departure. I discovered the site by the podcasts. It truly has changed my life. Well, thank you. That's very, very kind of you to say. I appreciate that. Um, and we love having you here. Uh, you have to go to your parents' house. <laughs> well, safe travels, and uh, make sure to sign up for the email list so that you know what's going on. So I want to, to think a little bit about that. Uh, Eric says that he struggles with that. Um, so Jeremiah brings up uh, electrical sockets are basically like embers in a fire. And Jonathan says, well, does that mean that we, you know, stop services online, you know, as we advance? So, you know, that's a whole other question too, right? So, like, 
is, um, you know, in a web-based community? Is that like the start of people's Jewish lives and then hopefully they launch off into something else? Um, you know, I've had people actually say that to me. People who are sort of apologists have said, well, you know, this is a good place for people to start, but, uh, you know, one day we hope they're going to show up to insert congregation. I want to talk about that, though, and, and I think that this is an interesting idea because we have members of our community who are homebound. We have members of our community who don't live near other Jews. We have members of our community who are in jail, as a matter of fact. We actually got a letter from someone in prison who was grateful uh, to be a part of the One Shoal community. So that's pretty cool, I think. As my mother uh, probably thought in my teen years, he will one day associate with criminals. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, um, but I, I always go back to the fact that we started off with Zachar, with remember, that that's the first comment about what we're supposed to do with Shabbat, is we're supposed to remember. And then after that, we defend. You can't defend something that you don't remember you get lost in the shuffle. And I see people do that. I see people who sort of become very religious. Not that we aren't, by the way. They just become religious in a certain way. And they kind of lose track of what the point was. You know, is Shabbat the closing of the door? You know, you're being locked out of life for 26 hours? I don't think so. I think it's that in this time we are at our fullest potential. You know, we are at our fullest place. Right now, you are more human than you're ever going to be. And in about 24 hours, if you're me, if you're in the Eastern time zone, your most openness of humanity will go away. You'll go back to being whatever it was that you were before, hopefully touched a little bit in some way. Hopefully it's um, like a, a campfire that, you know, you left it uh, looking a little bit better than how you saw it when you first arrived and that that's what, you know, uh, Shabbat can do for you. It leaves you that much better, that much cleaner, that much um, more emotionally open uh, than you were before. And so Ari makes a great point about Judaism is about uh, being together, and, you know, Ellen uh, brings this up as well. And that's what I like about being part of this community, is that we're together. That means a lot to me. I want to um, turn to page 6, Psalm 99. And I want to have uh, this opening line, and let's just take a moment to sort of be together. And that may seem kind of funny, since we're online, we're looking at our cell phones, we're looking at computers, whatever the case may be. But let's take a moment to realize that right now, somewhere between 13 to 20 people are all connected. We're all with each other right now. God has given us the intellect to create this, to create this ability for all of us to come together from around the world. And let's appreciate and sort of be still for a moment in that energy. Adonai Malak Amim Yoshve Kuvim Tanud Haretz Adonai Bitsion Gado Ram Hu Al Kal Hamim Rome Mu Adonai Lahenu Vesh Takavu Lahad Kocho Kikado Shadonai Lohenu
it's nice to take a moment to ground yourself a little bit. So I don't tend to give a Devar all at once. I like to spread it out. So as I said earlier, we're talking about Toldot generations, and there are several generations that are talked about in this week's Torah portion. And in fact, you could argue that Genesis as a book is just generations. It's generations going all the way back to the first person and the first people. And it's all about a family. It isn't until we get into the Exodus that we go from talking about one human family to one peoplehood. Um, and so the Toldot concept is really what all of Genesis is about. We talked about Isaac and what a tremendous amount of pain he must have been through, which made him sort of a silent person. But now I want to talk about Jacob and Esau. So we have two brothers, and it's actually said in the Torah that they fought in the womb which I can't imagine how difficult that must have been for Rebecca to have children in her womb fighting with each other. Esau is a red, hairy-looking character. Jacob is sort of the nerdy, quiet, uh, scholarly type. And they don't do so well with each other. And uh, to be a little bit of a spoiler, they will end up reconciling in the end. Now, Esau is a hunter, and actually, Esau is um, Isaac's favorite. Um, and what ends up happening is this, what's called the stealing of a birthright. So in nomadic cultures, in early um, tribal cultures, the firstborn child is sort of seen as having a particular spiritual potential. And the younger child doesn't have that. And so in the stealing of the birthright, what's really going on is that Jacob is uh, stealing this blessing that comes to the child who has the greatest spiritual potential. It's a usurping of a very early tradition. So we could say, in a sense, that Jacob is a little bit of a reformer. Now, he's a reformer, but he goes about it in this sort of uh, deceitful way. He puts on a hide that has its um, thick animal hair, so that when he goes up to his blind father, and his father reaches out and touches him, he thinks that that's Esau, and he receives uh, this blessing. Of course, we all know that there's a terrible tragedy going on in Israel right now. And I think that this idea of generations really fits well with it. I had asked earlier that we think about this idea of how the past affects who we are and how we pass that on. I don't know about everyone here, but I'm a Facebook addict. And so I see all over Facebook people's comments, and um, it's this sort of interesting thing where you have to, I sort of have two, two kinds of friends, I've noticed. So I have friends that are very, very uber Israel, and then I have friends who are uber-Palestinian, who are very pro-Palestinian. And so it's an interesting kind of thing when I see the um, GIFs, the pictures, coming up. And it's, you know, support Israel, support Israel, support Israel. And then I keep scrolling down. Support the Palestinians, support Gaza, free Gaza, and all of that. Now, I don't want to talk about politics. But I do want to talk about human beings and human nature and this idea of what happens in our past and how it affects our future. To be frank, I think about people that I know in Israel, and I can't imagine what it's like to live in a state where you are constantly having bombs lobbed at you 
Um, I can't imagine what that does to a person's psyche. And on the other hand, I can't imagine what it's like to be a Palestinian who can't go to another country. There's a, a lot of Arab states that don't uh, allow Palestinians to migrate in. They're stuck in Gaza. And with the history of what happened to their grandparents, great-grandparents, whatever the case is. Uh, I met a guy once who I consider to be the total American story. Um, his name is Omar, and Omar, Omar's father is Palestinian, and his mother is Mexican, and he was born in America. So he has, like, the, the ladies love him because he has, like, this perfect, like, all of the, the great combinations of, you know, being uh, Hispanic and at the same time uh, being Middle Eastern, uh, Arab. He has, like, you know, this beautiful complexion. He has long black hair, uh, and all the girls just uh, love him. And, uh, you know, I, I would see him every now and then at this coffee shop that I would go to. And, you know, he knew what I was did for a living, that I did Jewish education. And, um, you know, he had a, a historic gripe. And his historic gripe was uh, not just about Palestine and, and all of that, but also he was very upset about the conquistadors <laughs> going into Latin America and the Spaniards converting the uh, indigenous people to uh, Catholicism. And so he sort of thought of, uh, he sort of acted, you know, like that was, that was sort of the conflict that, uh, you know, it was an interesting conflict for him. Um, now, on the flip side of the coin, there is a uh, Lebanese-owned restaurant that I used to go to with some frequency, and they used to have two flags, or excuse me, three flags, up in their... Um, in their uh, restaurant. One was the Palestinian flag, the other one was an Israeli flag, and the other one was the flag of a white dove, and it said, Peace, Shalom, uh, Salam, Shalom. And I once, uh, I once asked the owner of that restaurant what he thought, you know, about uh, all the fighting that happens in the Middle East, and he said, Peace will come. One day peace will come. And, uh, you know, like part of me really wanted to get into that and really believe him. And then part of me wanted to be sort of the um, sly, cynical American who watches too much TV and, you know, sort of laugh about what he was saying and all of that. But it's all about generations. You know, he's Lebanese. He has a particular perspective based on how he grew up. If you are a child in Gaza, you have a particular perspective based on how you grew up. If you're a child in Tel Aviv, you have a particular perspective. Isaac and Esau had it better, or uh, um, Jacob and Esau had it better than Isaac did. Isaac became silent because of what happened between him and his father. And what happens to us affects who we are, and we gravitate towards things that speak to our experience. Let's talk about our community. What brings us here? What brings us here is the sum total of everything that we have ever done or that has happened to us. That's what moves us to be here and to do everything else that we do. I don't know about peace in the Middle East. I don't know how that works. That's not an area that I'm particularly intelligent in. I know what I know. I know how to build some websites. I know how to do some Shabbat services. That's pretty much what I got. I can make really good casseroles, too, but that's because my girlfriend taught me how to do it. Um, but... Uh, you know, generations, toledot, generations. Generations affect each other, and they affect where that generation comes from and where it's going to go. One generation bumps up against another and pushes it in another direction. 
And I think it's important when we think about that and how important it is that we love and care for each other. Because you never know how you're going to affect someone and how you're going to move them in another place. I had someone once tell me, you can't argue with people's feelings because they own their feelings. They are, it is their feelings. We can disagree with ideas. We can disagree with perspectives. But you can't disagree with feelings. Feelings come from how people have affected us. Total dote. We're going to move now to page 8 for the Chatsi Kaddish. Yit kedal v'yit kedash me rabba b'yamal divra kirote m'yamlik malchute b'chayechon v'yomechon uv'chayet dekol bet Yisrael b'agala b'agala uv'izman kariv b'meru amen yehesh me rabba mevorak li'alamu me'al maya yit barak yit barak v'yishtabak yit par v'yit ramam v'yit nasay v'yit adar v'yit alay v'yit alal shmeir kudesh abrichu la'ilam min kol berchata b'shir Rata Tushbechata Venehemata Damiran Mialma Vimeru Amen. Page nine. Begin the Barhu. Barehu et Adonai Hamevorach Baruch Adonai Hamevorach Leolam Vaed. We read now silently, bottom of page 9, Ma'ariv Arivim. El Chai Vekayam Tamidim Lokalenu Leolam Vaed Baruch Atadonai Hamari Varevim Avat Olam Bet Yisrael Am Chavta Torah Umitzvot Kuchim Umishpatim Otanu Limadata Alken Adonai Eloheinu Veshokveinu Uvkumbeinu Nasiach Behu Echa Benismad Bidvrei Doratecha Uvmitzvatecha Leolam Vae Ki Hem Hayenu Vehorek Yamenu Uvhanem Kem Yuma Vallaila, Baharta, Altasir, Mimenu, Leomim, Baruch, Hatalonai, Ohevamo, Yisrael. As we prepare for the Shema, it is the central prayer in Judaism. I want you to consider this idea of oneness. What it means to be anything in the universe is to be made of everything else that the universe is. So the universe, we believe, started with a central point of stress and breaking. Creation burst into life. But all of the stuff that was there in the beginning became what we have today. What you are as a human being is the Big Bang. You are what was there. You were that potential. And future toldot, future generations, are a continuation of that immediate stress, that immediate potential moment of breaking. And it's a spectacular thing when we say the Shema to consider that when we say that God is one, and we are made in the image of God, that we are one, and we are one with each other, and we are one with God, and we are one with everything in the universe, because everything in the universe is God, but is also not God at the same time. It's a spectacular thing. We cover our eyes. 
Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavod Malach Utzol Elam Va'ed I'll read together in English the Via Hafta. You shall love <clears throat> your sovereign God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your might. Take these words which I command to you on this day and keep them on your heart. Teach them to your children and speak of them in your house and wherever you go, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and as the frontlets between your eyes. Write them on your, upon your doorposts and your house and upon your gates. So I want to take a moment before we sing um, Vishamru and talk about what was the one thing in your week that made Shabbat worth happening? What was the one struggle that you had in your week that you're just like, whew, now I can relax? Or maybe you can't relax. Maybe it's not over with for you yet. Maybe there's still more to be done. Maybe when you're done watching this, you're going to move on to something else. Don't really know. But what's the one thing that made Shabbat worth having for you in this week? I know for me... It was dealing with iPhone apps. So I'm trying to work on an iPhone app for one show, and I am not a technological person, and I can't find anyone in the community who is, but we're trying to develop an iPhone app, and I can't get it to work, and uh, I've tried all these different things, and it's just totally not my area of expertise. Had a lot of technical stuff that we're working on this week, and boy, oh boy, I am like not the right guy to do this at all. This is, this is my kind of thing. Like, if I could just do this all day, that'd be fantastic. But uh, this technical stuff, I tell you, it's uh, is pretty rough for me. So I'll say that that's my uh, being grateful for Shabbat is that I don't have to deal with being unable to make iPhone apps. So Arava says, spending long hours in the hospital with mom and positive news with one cancer test remaining need Shabbat to unwind. Well. Arava, we wish your mama refuge lema, because that is some rough stuff. That is certainly rougher than iPhone apps. Tamara says, trying to take meds regularly, missing a dose and not doing well because of it. Yep, gotta gotta take your medicine. No ifs, ands, or buts about that. Does anyone else have something that they want to uh, share? So Tracy says, unwinding after another unsuccessful week of job hunting. Yep, absolutely, I understand that. And Jonathan, it sounds like you agree, <laughs> you agree there. Yeah, it's rough stuff. Very, very rough stuff. Ari says, lack of sleep. Absolutely. Ellen says, for me this week uh, is just the everyday stuff, life getting lost in all the little details. Completely. I completely understand that. So here's what I want to do. I want to take that bottled up stress and I want to sing it out here with uh, Vishamru. So this is the bottom, yes, yes, the bottom of page 12. 
Veshamru bene Yisrael et hashabat la sod et hashabat le Torah tamberit olam. Veshamru bene Yisrael et hashabat la sod et hashabat le Torah tamberit olam. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep doing this over and over. Veshamru bene Yisrael et hashabat. La sot et hachabat le Torah tamberit olam veshamru vene Yisrael et hachabat la sot et hachabat le Torah tamberit olam. We move to page thirteen, the opening line of the Amida. And we have the Amida all the way through here. You can read it silently. You can meditate, whatever is right for you. We are going to uh, end at page uh, 24. We're going to end, instead of doing the Elenu, I think it's appropriate, um, given the strife that's going on in the Middle East right now, that we end on page the bottom of page 24 with Od uh, Odiavo Shalom Elenu. So... Adonai sifatai tiftach ufi yagi tehilatecha. Adonai, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Shalom Rav Am Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Shalom Rav Am Yisrael Amcha Tassim Le'olam Before we do Od Yivo Shalom Aleinu, um, we have the Mourner's Kaddish. Does anyone, is anyone observing a yard site or in a period of ritual mourning? You have to speak up because we have a minion. So if you need to say Kaddish, please say the name of the person that we would like to say Kaddish for. So we remember Maud, we remember Mary Jo Jarvis. Is there anyone else in the community? doesn't have to be a Jewish person. Anyone who has no one to say it for them. Amen. Absolutely. And I would like to remember, because her Yarzite is technically um, on Sunday, I'd like to remember uh, Lily, who passed away recent, uh, passed away almost a year ago. Yit Gadal, Viet Kadash Me Rabba, Biama Divra Hirote, Biam Lik Malkute, Bahaye Hon Uyome Hon Uhaye to call Bet Yisrael, Bagala Uvisman Kariv, Vemru Amen, Yeheshme Rabba Me Borak, Leolam Ome Almaya, Yit Barak, Viet Tabak, Viet Par, Viet Ramam, Viet Nase, Viet Tadar, Viet Tele, Viet Talash Midakudisha Brehu, Le Ila mean Colbert Hata, Vashir Ata, Tush Bahata, Venechamata, Damiran Biama, Vemru Amen. Asay Shalom Biramav, Via Asay Shalom, Aleinu Vial Kul Yisrael.
to be my real. Amen. Let us end on page 24. It has the word Elenu in it, therefore it's appropriate for an Elenu, I think. Peace will come upon us, upon us and everyone. Peace on us and everyone. Peace, peace. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu ve'al kulam. Salam aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam. Salam, salam. Salam aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam. Salam, shalom. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu. Odiavo shalom aleinu ve'al kulam. Salam, aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam, salam, shalom. Salam, aleinu ve'al kol ha'olam, salam, shalom. Take a moment to, if I can find it, <clears throat> kiddush, get my blessings right here. Kiddush is on page, I don't even remember, because see, this is a new Siddur, so I don't know where anything is. Probably in the middle of Mariv. Let's see, where did they put it? Goodness, you'd think that I would know where this is. Here we go. Uh, page 21. Okay, middle of page 21 for the Kiddush. Savre haverim, baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam, bore pri hagafen, baruch atadonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav v'ratzavanu, v'shabat kodsho, b'ahava v'ratzon hinkielanu, zikaron l'mase v'reishit, ki hu yom tehila l'mikrayet kodesh, Zecher letziat mitzrayim, kivanu vacharta, biotanu kitashta, mikol hamim, veshabat kochecha, biahava uvratzon, kim kaltanu, baruch ataudanai mikadesh hashabat. Yummy. <laughs> A few announcements. Uh, we have lots of events coming up in the near future. Um, unfortunately, I don't have them all listed on the calendar, um, but they will be um, on Sunday, so you should check those out. But I'll go ahead and let you know. The 27th, 28th, and 29th of this month, we're actually going to have our first series of of um, what I am calling premium classes. So, so normally, all of our classes are free, all of our Shabbat services are free, everything we do is free. But, if you want some advanced learning, if you really want to do some crazy stuff, this is a three-part series, and it's got a very provocative title called How to Be Jewish. All right? So, What's Patrick going to say about how to be Jewish? It's an awfully bold statement, right? Well, it's a three-part class. We're going to discuss God. We're going to discuss the Torah. And we're going to discuss community. So these are the three sort of pillars of what Judaism rests on. God, Torah, and community. Now, why is this a premium class? Well, it won't be archived in the YouTube channel. You have to come, you have to participate live in order to experience it. You will, with the video itself will be archived, but it's going to be archived privately. So what you get for attending the class is the, the private link so that you can watch the classes over and over again. Now, they're going to be really great classes. There's going to be uh, some notes. It's going to be a little ebook uh, that's going to be available only to you. Um, the class is... Uh, $18 each. So 
Each class that you take is going to be $18. Uh, now, if you take all three classes, it's only $36. So you can pay for all of the classes for $36, and you can get uh, essentially the third class for free. Now, this is a fundraiser for our community because our community relies entirely on donations. Um, but this is a way that you can donate and you can also get something extra. Um, so this will be uh, in the last, it'll be the uh, 27th, 28th, and 29th of this month. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evenings at 6.30. So please come. Uh, we'll have a link on Facebook and Twitter and on the website where you can sign up to take those classes. The classes aren't going to be on the One Shull website, though. They're going to be on a Ustream page that's going to be private, so you have to sign up in advance in order to take the class. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get into the class. So, more information will be available on that. Uh, we're going to have an online Hanukkah uh, menorah lighting. That's going to be coming up. And then also, if you are near Atlanta, we are going to have every company has the winter party, right? It used to be the Christmas party, and then everyone became sort of pluralistic, and now it's the company holiday party. So we're going to have our own organizational Hanukkah event. So that's going to be Saturday, December 15th at 7 o'clock. It's going to be held in Atlanta. Uh, it's $12, and that's going to get you latkes. It's going to get you um, all kinds of great Mediterranean hors d'oeuvres. Uh, there's going to be sodas, water, tea, all of that stuff. There is going to be beer and wine. Um, that's just a cash donation if you want to drink alcohol. There's going to be No Limit Texas Dreidels. There's going to be a game. It's really cool. It's a combination of dreidel and poker. So we're going to be playing that. There's going to be music. There's also going to be a raffle uh, to win all kinds of amazing prizes. Um, so if you can get to Atlanta December 15th, please come because it's going to be an exciting, fun event. If you cannot afford the $12 to go to the event, you can volunteer at the event and it's free. So if you are interested in that, send an email to me, that's patrick at punktora.org, and let me know if you want to come. And if you want to volunteer, just saying, if you don't want to really do anything, the 12 bucks is the best way to go. Because if you volunteer, you will get your rear end kicked. Because there is a lot of work that has to be done to make the party uh, successful. So don't think that you're not going to get that 12 bucks dragged out of you in terms of time. Um, but uh, it's going to be a wonderful event. We have lots of sponsors. Uh, we have a lot of cool things that are going to happen. There's going to be a lot of people uh, who are going to be coming. I think so far we already have 30 people RSVP'd. And we haven't even sent out the announcement yet. So this is going to be a really cool event, and I really recommend if you can be in the Atlanta area to please come. Um, if you're going to come from out of town, let me know. We can try to set up some sort of place for you to stay. So, I want to end by closing our eyes, and I want to say uh, Misha Bayrach, a healing of mind, body, and spirit to all of those who are in Israel right now, to all of those who are in Gaza, uh, to everyone here in the community who may be suffering, to our friends, to our family, anyone, everywhere. All we want is a healing of mind, body, and spirit, and let us say Amen. So, thank you so much for coming. Um, if you missed any part of this, this will be archived on uh, our YouTube channel and on the website. Now, we do require donations in order to continue our work. So, it costs about $5 per person per event for one shoal to operate. So, I would highly encourage you, it's a tax uh, it's a tax-deductible donation because we are a nonprofit organization. I would encourage you to please donate. It is incredibly helpful. If you want to uh, donate um, using PayPal or WePay, you can click the Donate button that's at the top of the website. I've also included it here um, in the chat room. If you want to give more than $5, I highly recommend that everyone do this. 
because it's the only way that we can support the community. Free ebooks, free videos, online Shabbat services, Rosh Hodesh services, holiday services, Judaism classes. We have a 43,000 member community. We have to support each other because it takes a lot. It takes a lot for the volunteers. It takes a lot for us as staff to try to make sure that the websites are working and to make sure that they're being um, uh, updated the way that they should be. It really takes a lot of energy. If you want to give more than the suggested $5 donation, there's a really cool way to do it. So we have put on the Punctura website um, a link, and um, it's called What Punctura Needs. And I'm going to include this link in the chat room. You click on the green button that's at the bottom of this article, and it will literally tell you how much it costs for Punctora to do everything. And some of it's, you know, some some of it's really like mundane stuff. So it's things like how much does it cost to process payroll and send our um, uh, tax information to the IRS every year. So we have to do that as a nonprofit. We have to file our tax paperwork, and that costs money. So how much does that cost? One week of payroll, you know, here's how much it costs for one week of staff. Um, how much does it cost for one month of online marketing? How much does the chat room cost? How much does it cost to make one YouTube video? So this is a great way for you to find what it is that really you believe in and that you want to support and to support it that way if you want to give more than the $5 donation. So all we can say right now in this troubling time is that we hope for peace. We hope for peace around the world. We hope for peace in Israel, peace in the Gaza. I hope peace for all of you. I hope that we can live in the future in Olam Haba, which will be a true Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much for coming. I look forward to seeing you at our upcoming events. Take care.